folks, in this video I want to show you that it is possible to take photographs of deep sky objects that will amaze your friends and family using this type of mount here, an Altaz mount. My name is John and I make videos for my YouTube channel The Camping Astronomer on camping, astronomy and walking. If you enjoy this video then please check my channel out as you might find others that interest you there. But in the meantime let's crack on with today's video. Well, welcome to the Camping Astronomer HQ, otherwise known as my back garden. Uh, today it's a bit cloudy at the moment, but the weather forecast is for an hour's worth of clear weather between about 10.30 and 11.30 tonight. So we're going to have a little go at trying to photograph the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, the moon's out at the moment, unfortunately, something like 98% full moon, which is going to brighten the skies up massively. But we're going to press ahead anyway and see what we get. If your astronomy journey is anything like mine, we start off looking at the moon and the planets and the first time that you see the craters of the moon through a telescope or the gas bands on Jupiter or the rings on Saturn, it's a fantastic feeling and it stays with us forever. So having enjoyed your views of the planets and the moon with your starter telescope, you now decide that you're going to look for some of the brighter deep sky objects like the Orion Nebula and the Andromeda Galaxy both of which are well within the grasp of your average starter telescope. Uh, in my case, this was the Skywatcher Heritage tabletop telescope, if I remember rightly. And once again, you're thrilled by the views that, that you can get out of an instrument that perhaps only costs £100. So now you start getting a little bit more ambitious. Uh, you want to see some of the fainter objects. Uh, many people buy the book Turn Left at Orion that uh, li has a list really of attainable deep sky objects for you to look at. And then you eventually run into the problem, particularly if you live in a, in a town, that finding some of these objects can be quite time consuming. The problem with living in an urban area is that you find objects by star hopping and a lot of the time it, through the finder scope you physically can't see the stars that you're supposed to be hopping from one to the other in order to find the object that you're looking for. So you become seduced by the idea of a go-to telescope like this one here. Um, and there's a fair number of uh, relatively cheap go-to telescopes on the market, typically made by Celestron or Skywatcher. This one is a Celestron 127 SLT. I think I bought this in 2013 for about £350. Uh, they're on Amazon at the moment for around £450. So that for a computerised go-to telescope, they're actually quite inexpensive. So your new go-to mount uh, opens up a whole new world to you and you suddenly realise that you can see many more objects per observing session than you used to be able to see when you're having to manually find them yourself. Now you can track down objects uh, very faint objects that are uh, millions of light years away and it feels absolutely fantastic and you really want to share what you're seeing through the eyepiece with your friends and family and this is where you enter the slippery slope of astrophotography. So the obvious thing to do at this point is to point your camera or your phone down the eyepiece and see what you can get. And there are a number of adapters that enable you to do this. Uh, I had very limited success with this. I got a few pictures of the moon, but that was about it. Um, so you then do a bit of research on the internet and you discover that the thing to do is not particularly to take pictures down the eyepiece, but to replace the entire eyepiece with an SLR camera. So then you're using the uh, telescope like a gigantic lens with a camera on the back of it and using this technique I've managed to get my first photograph of a deep sky object, the Orion Nebula and uh, I was absolutely delighted with the results. Uh, here it is just uh, coming up now. So any attempts to improve on this over the next few months proved completely fruitless and I was getting absolutely nowhere. So more research on the internet led to the conclusion that in order to do astrophotography you need an equatorial mount. Now the mount that's commonly supplied on the um, kind of starter 
go-to telescopes is this kind of mount here. It's the same mount really, regardless of whether it's a Celestron or a um, Skywatcher mount. And these are called Old Azimuth mounts. So the consensus of opinion on the internet is that you can't do astrophotography with this type of mount. So consequently, at this point, I had to uh, reconsider whether I wanted to do astrophotography, whether I could justify buying a completely different mount or not. So quite a few months later, I was uh, browsing on the internet and I came across a passage from a book called Astronomy on the Go, which described how it was possible to do astrophotography with exactly my mount, the Celestron SLT mount. Uh, and this was a real game changer for me. I'll just show you um, what the cover of the book looks like. It's still available on Amazon, it's about £20 I think. And I should point out at this stage that I've got no affiliation with this book. But for me, this is the closest thing I've come to a game changer um, in the, the hobby and certainly was probably the best £20 I've ever spent. What the book actually showed me was that the focal length of this telescope here was actually way too long. This is a 1500mm focal length. That makes this telescope a high magnification telescope, uh, brilliantly suited to uh, viewing the planets, also uh, taking images of the planets and viewing deep sky objects. It's got um, quite a large aperture of five inches or so, so um, you get a decent magnification and decent light grasp. But the problem is that when you connect a camera to it, the magnification is so high that you can only get two second exposures, three second exposures before you end up with star trailing. And what the uh, book suggested to do was to replace the actual optical tube here with one of a completely different design. And the different design is a refractor telescope um, with a short focal length. And this particular refractor telescope is a, a very budget telescope um, called the Orion Short Tube 80. And it cost me only around £100. And it was the use of this telescope that overnight transformed my ability to take deep sky photographs. Currently it seems to be quite difficult to get this Orion Short Tube 80 telescope in the UK. But um, Skywatcher do a very, very similar telescope called the Star Travel 80. And that seems to be uh, on the internet for around... 115, 120 pound at the moment. So both telescopes have dovetail mounts, which means that the Orion short tube telescope fits straight into my existing uh, Celestron SLT mount. So having fitted our 100 pound telescope to our mount, all we need to do at this point is to remove the eyepiece here and replace it with a camera in here. And then we've got a fully functioning astrophotography rig. Now the reason that old azimuth mounts aren't recommended for astrophotography is the way they track the, scar the stars, it follows a kind of zigzag pattern across the sky, which means that uh, you can't do long exposure astrophotography, by which I mean, anywhere between one minute and five minutes. Um, but the trick is to keep the exposure time down to something like 15 to 20 seconds maximum and take lots and lots and lots of individual pictures and stack those in um, a stacking program like uh, Sequitor or Deep Sky Stacker and uh, then take the resultant image into Photoshop. and the book Astrophotography on the Go went through exactly how to do that. Um, it covered uh, tutorials on Deep Sky Stacker 
and a basic tutorial in Photoshop. So I went really from knowing nothing about astrophotography to being able to turn out photographs that might not win any awards, um, but I was certainly chuffed to bits with them. Now the Orion telescope, as I say, was uh, only around £100, and I think the Skywatcher equivalent in the UK at the moment is about 115 So, um, yeah, it has its limitations. The main problem with it really is that uh, you tend to get blue halos around the stars just because of the way the glass is arranged in the telescope. But it's possible to use filters to remove that and you can also um, take steps to remove them in Photoshop also. But uh, this telescope gave me a really good start in astrophotography and I used it for about a year. And then eventually I switched to an even smaller telescope, which is this one here, uh, which has more complex glass internals. So it doesn't suffer from the uh, blue haloing around the stars. It's got an even smaller focal length than the Orion telescope had. So it's even more forgiving um, as regards astrophotography in terms of exposure time. Uh, so you can get slightly longer exposure times from this smaller telescope than from the Orion uh, telescope. But I typically use 13 to 15 seconds as my exposure times in order to make sure that I don't get any star trailing at all. So I've now fitted my even smaller refractor telescope onto my Altaz mount. And you can see here how the camera has replaced the eyepiece. And this is the setup that we're going to use to take our photographs tonight. Hopefully the sky will clear up as the forecast suggests. And my intention is to aim at the Andromeda Galaxy because it's going to be above my roof at about half past 10, 11 o'clock. And I'm going to take maybe 50 exposures of 13 seconds each, probably at an ISO of 1600. So I'll keep my fingers crossed that I shall be bringing you back tonight for that astro session. did indeed clear last night for around an hour or an hour and a half so uh, we did manage to get a photograph of the Andromeda galaxy uh, even though the moon was virtually full so I was very very pleased with that um, the whole exercise probably took me less than an hour from picking the mount up taking it outside taking the photographs and uh, being all tidied up again and this is one of the things that Altaz mounts are um, particularly good for. Uh, you, it's not such a complex setup arrangement, so it's very good for what, what I would call smash and grab astrophotography. Um, and even though I've subsequently, just a couple of months ago, bought an equatorial mount so I can extend my exposure times to a minute or a minute and a half, um, I still use my Altaz mount. Uh, all the photographs that are in this video have been taken using this mount here uh, and the photograph of the Andromeda Galaxy and a host of other images that I've taken using a mixture of this 60mm um, TS Optics refractor and the Orion Short Tube 80 are shown on the end of the, the video. They um, were captured over a period of about uh, a year or so. 
So yeah, I hope for those of you who haven't Altas, who've got an Altas mount, that I've given you some encouragement that um, you can take your visual astronomy onto um, astrophotography territory, if you like, uh, with the proviso that all you need to do is to buy a hundred pounds worth or so of, uh, of optical tube. Uh, and then you can start dabbling in astrophotography. So I hope you have a, enjoyed the video <clears throat> and secondly I hope you enjoy the little selection of images that I've put on the end there uh, and the final thing for me to say is thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to doing my next video uh, it's a completely different subject more on the walking field where I'm going to be looking at uh, how you reduce the chances of getting blisters when you're using your walking boots so thanks very much Well, I hope you found that video uh, enjoyable. Uh, if you did, it would be great if you could press the like button and maybe make some comments about what you did or didn't like in the comments section below. Uh, if you did enjoy it though, uh, maybe have a look at the other videos on my channel as you may find something of interest to you there. And if so, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could subscribe. That would really help me out. Uh, but in the meantime, I wish you well and cheerio until next time.